Hello, hello, hello. I am having my coffee and I wanted to um, come on and make a video. Uh, Spirit led me to discuss attachments. And uh, we all in this world, in our life, have these attachments. And sometimes these attachments that we have can be to money, relationships, um, you know, people, places, or things, you could fill in the blank. And sometimes they're healthy attachments, and sometimes they're not so healthy attachments. And Spirit wants me to let you know that you could use your discernment as far as what type of attachment you're involved with currently, and possibly attachments that you've had in the past. So... I went ahead and did my prayers. I did my um, clearing of space. Always I do this before, and I know I don't show you on the videos, but and sometimes I do. But um, I did my Palo Santo, and I always usually light a candle just to get my mind clear and connect with spirit. So... There is an example where when you follow your spiritual path, um, we have people, places, or things that teach us lessons and help us realize certain things about ourselves. And ultimately, fast forward to the end, the fast forward to the end of your incarnation, and really, we walk that path alone. We all pass alone um, as far as the experience. We will be greeted with angels and loved ones, God, our spiritual team. Um, but as far as attachments go, in the spiritual sense, some of us have those unhealthy attachments when they were really there, put there for you to learn a lesson. And the attachment was a catalyst for you to grow in your spiritual journey. Um, and it could be that some, and I'm not saying everyone, but at some point, in our lives, we've all held on to those attachments, those relationships, those things, even staying at a place too long, staying in a home too long, or um, when your spirit is guiding you to move or, you know, change your environment. And some of those things can be very difficult, especially when you're doing a move. And I know a few people that have made, including myself, that has been led to, that have been led to change locations. And for me, it's been clear across the country where I had to leave my job and my home and all my friends that I knew and venture off to a place where I learned many lessons and I end up coming back, you know, to my home state, but I don't forget and I don't regret that move. And that's another thing is not living with those regrets. Because sometimes you have to take the risk of your comfort zone where you live, leaving everything that you've known. And that's, that's very brave of you. That's very brave of, of, um, of your spirit to be able to take that leap of faith that you will be okay, that things will work out. And it's not without its challenges, of course. And only you know what your challenges have been. A lot of people have... Um, made those moves and a lot of people like if you're 
you, you know your job brings you somewhere else you have to uproot your whole family or some people actually have led left family members or family um, a family dynamic because they are spiritually led to do so and be in service of God so those are some situations where attachments serve your higher good or dis detaching and it doesn't mean um, and detaching doesn't necessarily mean not feeling and being unemotional um, being unbothered because even when you're unbothered you could still have emotions you just don't let it affect how you react to certain situations so we do want to be unbothered I, I, I do pick up on a lot of people that are going through some situations that are that are focusing more on the situation and the hurts and what people have done to you and what you might have missed in a certain scenario or you know there's a lot of self-blame there's blame for others there's anger there's um, feelings of revenge you know these are these are true emotions that again God wants you to detach, detach from those emotions because it doesn't serve your purpose. Now, it's okay to feel, and I, I don't want to backtrack um, by saying that you should ignore your emotions because that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying to ignore your emotions. You know, feel through them. You have to transmute those feelings, but don't stay in that energy too long. If you could expand your thinking and think out of the box and maybe look at the bigger picture on at why you were removed from the situation or you were asked to detach from that situation or you were forced to, um, perhaps someone left you or you left your job or you were fired or, you know, take it how it resonates. But sometimes we get really caught up in the details and what spirit is doing for those others that might have, you know, hurt you or and, and it puts you in that lower vibration, that lower way of thinking where it was not meant for you to be connected to those circumstances, those people, those things. Let me drink some of my coffee. Mm. So for those that I am picking up on that, um, that it's your situation is going over and over and over in your head how you could have done something differently how they could have done something differently um, what you could have done you know as far as inner healing prior to whatever situation you're in or you were in spirit says don't have regrets Everything happens exactly how it's supposed to happen. You are supposed to feel these feelings. You're supposed to go through the emotions. Perhaps there was a time where you didn't feel emotions and you just moved on to the next challenge or the next cycle. So being aware of these emotions for sure and then really doing the work and everyone has different degrees of emotion there's all kinds of there's a spectrum of emotions that you the human can have and um, if you are able to dissect that emotion to see how you played your role in a particular situation and 
how others did, but really it's about focusing on you. Because even in relationships, a lot of the relationships are you're there to teach lessons to other people. So God uses you as a tool in in other people's lives as they as he uses other people to teach spiritual lessons to you. We are not supposed to be attached to the the details. Because in the end when you do review your life all those other people aren't going to be there to do that life review. Only you will be able to judge yourself and your actions on how you interacted and reacted to those spiritual lessons, those circumstances, those life-changing events that that hopefully you overcame. And if 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 it's not to your satisfaction, then you have that chance, possibly in other lifetimes, um, to make that right. So, hopefully, you're using this lifetime and the time, your time wisely, and using the guidance that God provides for you. It's available to you every single moment of your life. And to really make better choices and I include myself so it's not I'm not lecturing I'm not um, I'm just giving the message that spirit wants me to give today so going back to attachments again it, it could be healthy attachments it could be you know attachments to food it could be attachments to even exercise it could be attached so you know recognize that anything could be on a scale of um, too little or too much. When you are in a relationship, Spirit's telling me that sometimes God sends some of His finest beings almost like gifts to, to individuals, to you. And it's almost like a test to see how you're going to treat his gift and some of us overlook the gift and um, take it for granted and you, maybe it's great in the beginning maybe the job is great in the beginning maybe the relationship is great in the beginning maybe the experience is great in the beginning and then you come to a point where it's it, it it's is taken for granted and we we forget to show the love we forget to put the care and the time and the and your resources and resources could be anywhere anything it could be you know not it doesn't necessarily have to be money or anything material but you know being there for that person if um, emotionally um, and spiritually and the the ability and the um, desire to grow in that situation, whether it be with a person, place, or thing, um, even even a beautiful animal to be a companion. Sometimes we all have um, we've we've seen like strays, like animals, strays, and uh, we walk just right past them and without acknowledging the dog or even people that are um, that are homeless and of course you always want to be safe but when when I did travel um, to some of the other countries Asian countries in the fall I witnessed children children I, I'm talking about 15 years and younger that were on the streets that were um, that were begging they were hungry they didn't have uh, they hadn't had anything to eat and I actually experienced some 
older um, individuals, people, people like you and I. I mean, can you imagine going through the day without eating anything, you know, or drinking anything? I have my coffee here. But, you know, in, in, in the United States, it seems like that wouldn't even, it, it doesn't even happen, but it does happen. You know, there's plenty of children that, and families that go without food <clears throat> because of their situation. So, really showing um, that compassion when you have those gifts. So, a gift can be just like that. You know, you're going into a convenience store and maybe someone is outside the door and ask you for some change and that can be a gift that might be an opportunity for you to maybe open your heart and I'm not saying give everyone money and, and we have judgments on that too because a lot of people will not give money or they'll not give anything or even acknowledge the person because you think that they're lower than you or they are beggars or they're drug addicts or they're just going to buy alcohol or just going to waste your money and you work hard and you tell them go get a job and I've, I've witnessed that just you know and if you've never witnessed that it to me it, it's um and I, I know a lot of people think that and not even say it but when I've witnessed that it, it, it does rub my soul in the wrong way so of course again I work on that because I don't want to judge that person that's that's doing that um, everybody spirit says that everybody's at different levels um, in their spiritual growth and even in their physical life you know, someone could be homeless one day and maybe find God and, uh, you know, turn his life around. I've uh, studied uh, Neville Goddard and um, his teachings, and he was a mystic in the 1940s. He's got uh, a lot of material out there. There's a lot on YouTube, and um, he was a Christian, and he... He his he was he taught people about manifestation and his teachings were based on on the Bible and um, he discussed and if you could go on YouTube and you know I have all of his books but you, you could go on YouTube and find a lot of the, his material um, his actual speeches that were recorded uh, so there's a, a, a few. Um, YouTubers that have channels specifically, I mean, that's all they, not that it's all, because it's, it's a huge area. He, he was very influential, um, where at that time people, some people just laughed at him. <clears throat> I find that his, uh, his teachings are definitely... definitely messages from from our spiritual realm if you happen to ever have the chance to study or the interest to study Neville Goddard it's Neville N-E-V-I-L-L-E -L -L -E, Goddard G-O-D-D-A-R-D -D excuse me so um I didn't want to make this video that long I just wanted to give that message because spirit wanted me to discuss attachments and um, and using your your intuition right your your gifts that God has given you <clears throat> in order to know when to um, to detach and move 
to the next cycle or move to the next uh, lesson. <laughs> I might discuss a little bit about um, well, Spirit says that'll be for another video. So I hope this helps someone. I hope this made sense. Um, you know, if, if you are given gifts of and you know or you realize that you come to the realization that it is, it, they are divine gifts, don't squander them. You know, try your best to um, learn that lesson. And if you're giving love and you're you're showing kindness and you're and you really um, come from the heart instead of and sometimes you have to use head over heart. But when you recognize that God gives you the gifts and it, like I said, it could be in the form of a new home or it could be in the form of a new job. When you're in the space of gratitude and love and appreciation. And all those wonderful emotions and um, abundance and uh, those are going to attract more of it for you. And you never know who God sends you. Um, so really be mindful on, on who comes into your life and who you may pass you know, you, you might meet in passing because those are chances, those are opportunities. And, and most of you are getting it. Most of you guys are, are, and gals are, are passing, you know, these, these tests, these lessons and are growing in, in your spiritual um, journey. And God's very proud of you and your spiritual team is very proud of you and it makes the angels sing and it is absolutely beautiful today I I'm not sure how your weather is but I the last week including the rain has been fantastic and I'm so grateful I'm just I know I need to go out and do some work some some yard work uh, but um, I'm going to close this up hopefully this helps someone out there and you know just do some self reflection you know get out in nature have some water or a cup of coffee or tea if you like do some self care you know sometimes it's okay to you know pour back into yourself whether it be like a spiritual thing or or a physical thing something to make yourself you, you feel good about yourself and these are if don't depend on other people to do that for you and certainly do not manipulate people to have them do that for you use your own energy our source is God our source is our creator our source is the spiritual world don't manipulate don't use people appreciate what you have appreciate what you're given appreciate the people that the positive people in your life that you're given you know help try to help where you can give love freely love the enemies too love those people regardless of what they do to you because again when we've detached from the physical world no one else is going to be there except for you and your creator and that's where you, the judgment comes in that's where you get to judge your life your actions your thoughts your intentions your motivations you get to Come right in front of your spiritual team that's been with you for a lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And you get to judge yourself to see how you did. And 
trust me, you, you, you're going to want, you're going to want to be proud of yourself. Where maybe no one else in the world, maybe when you were growing up, maybe when you were, um, you, you needed the help, you needed the support. Your spiritual team is there, you know, so do good. You know, if you're, if you're still sitting in, in lower vibrations, lower energies, lower um, influences, and not taking accountability for things that you've done, things that you're doing that you continue to do and not want to change, you know, hey, you could be spiritual and be addicted to things. You could be spiritual um, and have these physical addictions or these, these negative thoughts. It's fluid. Things are fluid. Energy is fluid. So you could be 100% good over here, but then something's going to set you off or someone wants to attack you or someone wants to do harm to you or someone has... So it's a natural thing that, you know, you want to protect yourself. So when you have peace inside yourself and you really have worked on your inner, your inner self, your heart, your heart center, your heart chakra, there's less chances of you going off that path. And there's more chances of you being able to spread the love and the the happiness and the positivity that we need so much in the world. So I'm going to leave you at that. And um, if you liked my message today, please like, share, subscribe, make a comment. Um, I read all comments. And cheers. Have a good day.